Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Zhangguo, which is a game all about the reunification of China back in the year, like I think it's something like 200 BC, what was it, 230 BC. And basically the situation is the first emperor of China, I believe, has pulled together all the warring states of this region. That's what Zhangguo means, actually, warring states, and is combine them into one great and mighty nation, which will one day be known as China. And it's actually divided into five provinces, although each of these provinces is composed of many different warring states. And so that all sounds great and fine and dandy, but here's the problem. Those warring states, they don't really get along very well, and they're not very happy about being all slammed together into these new districts. And so we, as players, are emissaries of the Emperor, whose job it is to smooth over all the rough edges and truly finish what the Emperor started and get the place unified. And we're really doing that across three metrics. We have to unify the writing, the currency, and the laws of this crazy land composed of who knows how many different states that hate each other's guts. So it isn't going to be easy, but if that weren't enough, the Emperor has also decreed that we help build the Great Wall of China. Got to get that thing built because of all the barbarian hordes to the north that we got to keep out. And if that weren't enough, well, he wouldn't be an Emperor if he didn't want to have lots of palaces erected all over the place in his honor. So, and, 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 he also wants a bunch of governors installed to oversee all the different provinces. So, that's all the stuff we are focusing on over the course of this game. In this, I should say, very, very heavy game. I'm not going to say complex, because it actually, the structure of this game is very simple. But wow, there is a lot <clears throat> going on. A lot to consider for every single move you make. In part, because before we started, we had to randomly set up the Emperor's requests. He's got these six different requests. You can see there's these tiles, there's a bunch that aren't in the game. And so they get randomized. And so the Emperor would really like to see some wall sections built in the, what is it, I guess the kind of purple and the blue area, but also in a double blue and yellow area. He'd also like to see palaces uh, built in areas one and four, or alternatively areas three, four, and five. And he'd like to see some governors put into areas four and five, and, or and or, I should say, two, three, or four. And it's kind of interesting to notice these are all the brown ones, these are the green ones. What we're going to be trying to do is achieve these goals. If I could build a palace, say, in Region 1 and Region 4, I'd move this, one of my markers over here, and hey, I'd score four points at the end of the game. That's great. But if, say, I were also able to get a governor in Regions 4 and 5, like he's requested, I'll get five points, but since I have gotten two of these three requests done, I will get my total uh, points here, uh, five plus four is nine, and multiply it by the number of discs I put out here. So I basically just doubled, I've grown from nine points to 18 points. If I can get the third one, let's say Jen gets the first one, but then I get the second wall built, now we're looking at nine, 10, 11 times three, 33 points. So there are a lot of points to be made. But on the flip side, say if I got you know this one, and then I got this one down here, you know, in, in this other section, there would be no doubling or tripling of points because this would be a single, and this would be a single. But if, say, I got this one over here, now this is five plus three times two. So that provides a lot. I mean, it's really interesting. You've got like kind of this split. You know, the, the, the Emperor would really like you to focus on either this chunk or this chunk. Although over the course of the game, the interesting thing is once I've, say, done emperors or you know uh, governors in areas four and five, well, hey, you know what? I got one in four. If I can get one in three and two, then I can finish this one as well. So there's a lot of in-game bonus stuff going on here, but that's not all. Also, as I start, you know, as the, the emperor is requested, helping to build up the Great Wall of China, we can get we can get additional end of game bonuses. Like in this case, both Jen and I in a two player game will have contributed to this section of the wall. That means we'll both be in the running for bonus points based on how many, I think white cubes are civilian leaders, how many civilian leaders we have in all our provinces. So that's pretty cool. But the interesting thing is since I built in the tougher spot where I need to give up three workers to do it, I get a 4x bonus. Since Jen built in the nice, cheap, easy spot, she only gets a 2x bonus. 
So, but and, and again, these walls, you know, they're two-sided, so there's a lot of different things they can be. And between all the wall in-game bonuses and all the Emperor Requests in-game bonuses, there's a lot of different stuff we could be trying to shoot for over the course of the game. <clears throat> but then on top of that, there's tons of points to be scored just while we're playing for building palaces and various things as well. Oy, there's a lot going on, but you know what? I've talked about big picture stuff enough. Let's actually start playing the game and stop talking about it. So, the game takes place over five rounds. We are here in the first round, and the first thing that happens every round is each player draws two unification cards in each of the three categories. So we're each getting two writing unification, two currency unification, and two law unification decks. And this is our hand of cards, six cards. Now, interestingly, the game actually comes with several variants that um, you know, create a little bit more complexity and depth. One of the variants is we could draw three from each deck and then get rid of one. So we'll still only have two, but that gives you a little bit more control over the draw in case you're bothered by you know, luck of the draw. Now, Jen and I, we haven't played that way, but we have found just drawing the two is fine. It gives you plenty of variety. You can never truly get screwed because you're always, all these cards have multiple uses. There's lots of things they can do. So now this is my hand of six cards. Jen's got her, we'll worry about her hand a little bit later. Let's just put that over, put it that way. And let's, let's actually move my hand over into her area because I'm going to need my own space here pretty soon. <clears throat> so, we each have our hand of six cards. And over the course of this first round, we are going to take turns playing a card. I'll play, Jen will play. I'll play, Jen will play until all six cards are gone. And then, at the end of the round, we will see and compare who did the most for unifying writing, currency, and laws. Because here we are in the first round, there is there are bonuses. Whoever did the most writing unification gets this bonus. Whoever did the most laws unification gets this bonus. So we are competing both in the long term for all these goals, but also in the short term for these bonuses that we get at the end of every round. Right, so I've got my hand of cards. I have to play a card. Now, there are two ways. I have to pick one of these cards. I can play them in one of two ways. Each of these cards represent different, even, you know, we are, we as players are emissaries of the Emperor. These are our emissaries that we can send around to various places to do stuff on our behalf. And so I have to decide, may, say I want to take uh, this, this old gentleman here. I could either send him to one of the five provinces you know, one, two, three, four, and five. And I do that not by putting the card on the board, but you notice over here on my player board, I've got a representation of provinces one, two, three, four, and five. So I could send him to one of the five provinces. And what that means is I, I take him and I slide him under here like this. And what that means is in province number two, I have worked on the unification of, since this is a currency, I've worked on unifying currency over here in province number two. And what that would do is that would get me one currency marker, which at the end of the round is how I'm going to keep track of if I did more for unifying currency than anybody else. Because you know, if I play another currency, I could unify more currency, either in that province or a different province, and get more of these markers. Because again, Jen and I are competing to unify currency writing and laws. So now if I put him out here, you know, that, that gets me you know, the one point towards the unification. But it also means this guy is now living out here in province two. And he has actually, I don't know, made some contact, set up some dealings that will benefit me later. You'll notice anytime I do the recruit builders or conscript builders, I get a special bonus now. And this is going to be a bonus I can get for the rest of the game if I ever do the recruit workers command. Now, how do I do that command? Well, that was the other thing I could have done with this card. Instead of sending, you know, old Bob here, oops, I'm keep knocking stuff around. I've knocked all my player markers around. Ah, dear, so clumsy. Instead of sending old Bob here you know, out to the provinces, I could send him to the emperor's palace, which means he would come over here. And whenever I send any of my emissaries to the palace, that allows me to do any one of these six palace actions. And those actions are build the wall, build an emperor's palace somewhere out in the world, recruit more workers. I can't build the wall or palaces unless I have workers. Um, and then over on the other hand, I've got, let's see, what are these called? What are the cubes called? Are they advisors, I think, is what they're? Oh, rule book. Why can't you just let me find the words? Da, da, da. They are 
Officials, they're officials, okay. So I can recruit officials, which are these cubes that I can basically send out to any of the five provinces, and I need to send these um, officials out here to do stuff. I can, if I have officials, I can move them around from province to province, and in every province, if I had previously said, oh, actually, I forgot to mention, at the beginning of the game, we actually have two military officials and one civilian official. That's just part of setup. I forgot to do that. You can see they're right here, two military and one civilian official in region one or province one. So I could send, I could hire more officials and send them out, or I could move them around from space to space. You know, because they're all right here right now, but I might want to move some over here. You know, spend a point and maybe spend two points to spread all my guys out to the different regions so they can do stuff for me in the different regions. That's what this action is for. Alternatively, I can hire governors. Remember, that's one of the things, in addition to palaces and walls, we also want governors hired in the various provinces. To be able to hire a governor, I have to have one of each of the three colors of official. If I, like, so if I had, say, sent my old Bob here to hire a, uh, another official and I could hire a white official, put him here, I am now ready in the future to send somebody else over here so that I can get a governor into this region, which will give me benefits, including you know um, making the emperor happy. So that's an example of a couple things I could do. But the interesting thing is, say before I send Bob up here to, let's see, yeah, before, before I send Bob up here to get that white cube, um, you know, that white official, so that I can hire a governor here, I might have sent Joe over here. This is not their names. Um, I'm just going to go with Bob and Joe. And now, because I've sent Joe out here previously, I now have a special power. Every time I recruit an official up at the palace, I get to take an extra disc, which helps me with my end of round bonus scoring. So, that... That is the crux of the game. This very, very interesting intermix of actions where if I send my emissaries to the, out to the provinces, well, they'll, they'll give me some immediate um, bonuses in the form of unification points, but they will also create interesting combo opportunities so that when I go to the palace, I can you know, do extra stuff but only under certain circumstances. There's a little bit of brinksmanship that goes with that too. But you know what? I've talked about this too long. Let's actually start playing. I'll explain more as I go. So anyway, now the interesting thing, I look at my hand of six cards. I've got one, two, three of them. Three of them that will give me bonuses if I, if I install these three guys out in my provinces. Whenever I do a higher workers action, I could, tr I could get all three of these bonuses moving workers around, moving workers around, and having additional workers. So, it kind of behooves me to maybe get all three of these guys into play so that I become then the ultimate worker generator guy. I could use these three out in the provinces, then I could use these guys to do other stuff, like hire workers. <clears throat> now, let's see, the, and these other ones, the special powers these guys get, they're all different ones. So I've got a choice to make in this first round. Do I want to go for a strategy of putting all my eggs into one basket so that when I do one recruit action, I'll get a lot of special bonuses? Or do I want to mix it? Because say, if I put these two guys out in the provinces, this guy will get me a bonus when I hire more officials. And then this guy will get me a bonus when I, when I do governors. And I need to hire officials before I can do governors. So this is like a nice one-two combo if I put these guys out here. Um, let's see, and then I got this guy who will give me a bonus off the walls if I build walls. But I can't build walls until I've hired a lot of workers. <laughs> right off the bat, I've got a million different ways I could go. And let's see here. I think, hmm, what's interesting, both of these two guys give me basically the same ability that when I hire workers, I get to move workers around, which is nice. But I think what, having one of those, so I think I'll, I'll plan on getting two of these guys played so that I've got, I've got a bonus for hiring workers, and then I'll get this guy played as well, because I'll be using those workers to build Great Wall of China stuff. And so I'll be getting a bonus, which means these other ones, which means I'm going to hold off on doing officials, I'm going to hold off on doing um, governors. And now this one, maybe I'll play it, maybe I'll go to the palace, we'll have to see. But for starters, I've got kind of rough of I a rough idea of what I want to do this round. So, for starters, let's go on ahead and get... Uh, good old Sam here, whatever his name is, and I'm going to install him into one of my provinces. Now, I can put him in any of the five provinces. 
I'll just go on ahead and start out by putting him close to home here in province one. All right. And now that means what I've done is I have uh, installed him. I've now got this special power I can get, I can leverage later when I go to the palace and I have increased, you can see uh, this was my unification of law. So I've got one law unification marker. I have started to increase the unification of laws in region one. And that was my first play. I'm going to have five more of them before the round is over. Now it's Jen's turn. Let's see what she got. All right, so she got two governor bonuses, a palace bonus, another palace bonus, and two worker bonuses. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. So, and now also Jen's got another interesting thing too. She can see that I have started to unify laws. If I am, if Jen doesn't compete with me on that, and I at the end of this round have more unification markers for laws, this is the bonus I'll get. I'll get two free officials put out on the board wherever I like. And so that's a very nice shortcut. Um, and so Jen's got to decide, does she want that bonus more than me? Because if she does, she needs to start playing her law officials out here so that she can start earning more, you know, because she's got two law officials just like I do. And if she wanted to do that, that means she'd be putting um, the palace bonus and the worker bonus out here. So does she want to go down the worker bonus as well? Or does she want to start getting um, bonuses in someplace different as well? You know what? I think she will play a worker bonus as well. She's going to go on ahead and play Susan here. Sorry. Should be using Chinese names. She'll play this emissary. And also went in first. And just like me, Jen has gotten one law unification bonus as well, because that was a law card. So, so far, we are neck in neck. We have both done kind of the same thing, although it's interesting. The bonus Jen has unlocked for herself, every time she hires workers, she gets two victory points immediately. Uh, it's important to notice that the uh, red victory point marker means you get the points immediately. A black one means you get them at the end of the game. All these bonus points are at the end of the game as opposed to this, which Jen will score immediately when she does a worker action in the future. And that is a worker action up here. Oy, okay, back to me. Now I get to play my second card. Let's see here. So, and I say to myself, well, that's interesting. So now Jen is competing with me on unification of laws. Now, the other cards I want, my other card I wanted to play was this one, which is going to uh, give me more law unification, and it's going to improve my ability to build the Great Wall of China. And that's what I was thinking. I was going to have two workers and the wall. That was what I was going to focus on. So, I think for starters, I will take this man and I'm going to install him in a region as well. Now, I can install him in any of the regions, uh, you know, two, three, four, and five. So I can start, you know, working on, and if I do that, it will get me one more law token. So I'll have two law tokens. But instead, what I'm going to do is, hmm, I'm going to install him up here in the region where I already had my first official. So now I have put two officials in region one. And now there's a nice little summary right here that actually shows you what happens when you install officials. Or I'm sorry, when you install emissaries. These are the officials, these are the emissaries. If you just put a single one in, uh, well, like you saw, you get a single disc. If you put two of them in, now this is my second one, I get two discs of the appropriate type. So I get two more law discs. So now I've done a total of three law. But because the warring states in region one don't like me coming around and putting all these emissaries in and telling them what to do, the more emissaries you put into a region, the more unrest you create in that region. You see that little black cube? That means I gotta take my one of my black cubes and put it here. And I have started to create unrest in this region. The people are upset that we keep telling them what to do because we have told them, hey, you know your old laws? To heck with it. We're throwing them out and replacing them with these new laws. And the more you do that, the more you tell them what to do, the more their unrest will grow. And um, if it grows so high, you can't build palaces anymore. If it grows too high, you can't use the abilities of that region. So that's something you have to bear in mind. You have to keep the people happy. Or at least you have to keep them subjugated so they won't revolt and riot. But, uh, so I'm pushing myself a little bit by putting this here. But on the same token, I, the emperor is pleased because I now have three law unification tiles. That was my second play. Now it's Jen's turn. So what is she going to do? I think she was going <laughs> to... Jen, she's going to go a not quite so hardcore way. She's going to place another law as well. 
but she's not going to put it in the same region because she doesn't want to sow unrest and discord. So she's going to put this guy in this region over here. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, wait, no, I've already forgotten what Jen's plan was. She had one worker. Right, I think, yeah, she, you know, I'm building workers towards the goal of making walls. Jen is building workers towards the goal of building palaces, right? So now she gets a, a bonus for doing workers or palaces. And now this was, a, her, this was her other law card. She can see I've earned three law tokens. If she wanted to earn three, she could have put this at a higher level, but then she'd start to sow discord and um, she doesn't want to do that. So she placed over here. So that means she only gets one cube, but on the flip side, she did not have to put any unrest cubes out. Right. So that means I have pretty much won the race. I've got three law unification. Jen's only got two. So I'm the one who won that bonus because nobody else has any more law cards. So that was Jen's second turn. Now my third turn, I'm going to get my other law guy or my other recruit guy out here. Now this is interesting. Let's see. Now this guy is going to be all about unifying money. And you know what? In for a penny, in for a pound. Let's go crazy. I am really going to piss off the people of Province 1. I'm going to install him. I'm going to install a third emissary here. I'm running out of room. There we go. Third emissary. Okay. And so, and now you can't do more than three. This region is now completely full. And if I look over here, when I put a third level up, I get three. So this means I get three currency markers. So the emperor will be pleased. I have earned three currency and three law markers. So I'm in the running to win both of these bonuses at the end of the round. But on the flip side, when you place a third one up here, you put two, you, you increase the, the discord by two more. One, two. These people are almost in full on riot mode and I cannot build palaces in region one now because the people are too unhappy. If they go up one more, I will no longer be able to get any of these bonuses. And that'd be a real bummer. I, I installed these guys so I can get all these bonuses. So, but fortunately, it cannot go any higher. So I'm just pushing this region right to the end, right on the brink of revolt. All right. <clears throat> now it is Jen's turn again. She, uh, like me, hmm, she had, you know what? No, no, she'll wait on that for a while. She had another worker as well. She's just going to go ahead and install him. She's just going to keep on spreading them out instead of putting them all her eggs in one basket. Now, this is a guy that will get her two um, official movements whenever she does a worker hiring. Um, but she's putting it over here in a new place. So that means it gets her, let's see, this is currency. So it gets her one currency token. So, as you can see, Jen is behind me in all ways on the unification, but she's also not creating any discord amongst the people. All right, so that was Jen's third action. My fourth action, we're almost done. I've got three more cards to play, and then the first round will be over. Hmm, now, if I, I, I now I'm, I'm tempted to put another one out here so that when I do a work action, I can, what do you call it? I can get another bonus as well, which is moving more workers around. But here's the tricky thing. Now, this is the one thing I have not talked about at all yet. You may have noticed there are numbers on all of these emissaries I've got sent around, 28, 33, and 64. Now, every type of card comes a different range. All the writing cards are 1 to 40. Um, you, and every single card in the game has a totally unique number. All the currency cards are 41 to 80, and all the law cards are 81 to 120. Now here's the thing, when I send one of these guys, you know, if I send Joe up here to the palace, so, and, and I want to do the higher worker action so that I'll get the, all the, these bonuses I've earned, I have to make sure that when I do a worker hire action, the number of the guy I put down is higher than the previous number. So let's say, just for the heck of it, Jen had gone to Jen's next move is she goes to the palace and puts this guy down, which is a 74, right? And then Jen sends her emissary to the palace to do one of the actions. It doesn't really matter for this example. She goes and does something and then it's my turn again. And now I'm thinking, hey, I'm going to go to the palace and I'm going to build and I'm going to get all the bonuses. Here's the problem. Jen put down a 74. My highest number is 64. And if I put it down, it's um, to me to unlock my worker bonuses, I have to put down a higher number than what Jen had done. And so Jen has effectively, by putting this uh, 74 down, she has 
has denied me the ability to get my bonuses, either from building a wall or from hiring workers. Ouch, that is bad news, as you might imagine. So, oh my goodness. Hey everybody, apologies for my rude budinski here, but I got so carried away filming this run through, I ended up going like well over an hour. So I'm just gonna cut this run through in half right here. Uh, believe me, you guys have only seen the tip of the iceberg. There is so much left to demonstrate. And if you'd like to see some more, you can hit the button that's somewhere over there where Tula is lazing around on the couch and uh, or follow the show notes to go to the extended playthrough. Otherwise, you can hit the other button and go straight to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.